my dears, in love and light. Five ways to love everyone. Now, you might wonder why would I want to love everyone and everything and everything in creation? Well, it's just one of those things we need to try and figure out on our path, on our, on our spiritual path. It makes things a lot easier. While we're making this ascension and our level of consciousness is raising, we realize it is possible to have love for everyone and everything. And there's really good reasons for it. Some of those reasons are being able to forgive, have understanding and forgiveness, uh, being able to raise our own vibration so we can make that ascension. If we're living in love and understanding, we can raise our vibration to make that ascension and do our spiritual progression. It makes being alive a lot easier. It helps everything wash over us. It helps life to wash over us because we have love and understanding for everyone and everything. So none of the crap matters anymore. It's all good. It really is all good. There's so many reasons why we might want to love everyone and everything. You walk around feeling so good all day, every day. So then you might say, well, how can I love people who are really mean to me? Or how can I love people who destroy the environment? How can I love the controlling elite? How can I love oil companies? How can I love dirt and grime? <laughs> Things like that. Well, you can. <laughs> and I'm going to give you ways to do that. Number one, a way to love everyone and everything is understanding. Now, if you have understanding for the object of the thing that you're trying to work on and feel love for, then it helps you to love it better. So you can actually have understanding for absolutely everything. So let's say there's someone, let's say there's a thief and he's stolen a bunch of stuff from someone's house. How can you have love for that thief, which is part of creation? By having understand, now this is just one of the key points, all of my five points, when they come together, it's easier to have love for everyone and everything. And this is just one point. Having understanding for that thief, it's easy to think that person is a thief because they're a bad person. But really, they're doing it because they have a backstory. Everyone has a backstory. That person may be extremely poor and fighting for survival. That person may have had an extremely negative upbringing. They may have been abused, uh, beaten, they may have been deprived, neglected. And then you can start having a bit of sympathy for that person because you're having understanding for them. They're no longer someone who's just a bad person. You now having some understanding of why they might be how they are. Then you might say, well, maybe none of those things happen to them. But then I would say that everyone is how they are as a result of what's happened to them. Yes, there's some carry through, some bleed through from various lifetimes, but I am the way I am because of everything that's happened to me and the conclusions I've drawn about it and the work that I've done on myself. Others may not have done any work on themselves, not examined themselves at all. They may have been in such, such deprived situations that they cannot help what they do. They are subject to social norms and others behaving the same way. They may have others evaluating them, measuring them up on how they behave, even if it's a negative way. They may be trying to fit into a negative group and behaving that way in order to have some inclusion and validation. So having understanding for the reasons why everything and everyone is how they are helps you to have love for them. One more example, let's say we've got a big corporation that's destroying the environment. I know this is very tough, In initially you think it's tough, but points I'll get to shortly will make it easier, but we're still on understanding. So we've got a big co corporation destroying the environment. You can manage to have love for the people in that organisation, because the organisation, the corporation is just a concept. It consists of people putting a framework and organization in place. Now, there's people within that organization who have had backstories that have made them greedy, careless, perhaps psychopathic, and all the things that make them into bad people. But we can have understanding of why they are how they are and why they're destroying the environment. They're not enlightened. They're on a negative path and all of these things 
they have a backstory that's made them greed and manipulative and trying to gain power over others, not caring about the environment. Now we have understanding for why they have ended up that way and we can have a bit of sympathy for them because if they had received love, understanding, a wonderful, loving, caring, supportive upbringing with lots of love and care, they may not be so blind to what they're doing and exhibit psychopathic behaviours. So we have understanding for why they are, how they are, which helps us to love everyone and everything. Remember, Rome was not built in a day. You're not going to wake up and love everyone and everything, especially things like big corporations destroying the environment overnight. It's going to take some time. But I'll go through other points. You may be saying, Nikki, you're crazy. You love even those guys, even people who do terrible things. I love all of creation. I just love creation and the positive and negative which is inevitable. And I'll get into those points in a minute. So don't think I'm a bad person yet. Just stay with me here. Number two on how to love everyone and everything is forgiveness. Now that you've got understanding, it's so much easier to have forgiveness. So I have understanding on why a dictator is incredibly evil in his country, evil in his country and, and ruining people's lives because of, he, of the way he was brought up, the things he was taught. And as a child, you are given negative information and it becomes your reality. I have understanding for why that dictator does heinous crimes, terrible things. I have understanding. That's the way his mind has been tailored and the conclusions he has drawn. So I can have forgiveness. You can have forgiveness for anyone with enough understanding, maybe they're brainwashed, maybe they're forced, maybe they're incredibly stupid. <laughs> All of these things, you can start to have forgiveness through the method of understanding because then you can have empathy, put yourself in their shoes or attempt to and realize that ultimately it's not their fault if you go back far enough. If they'd had the proper support, love, understanding from the beginning, they wouldn't have turned out like that. If they'd not been brainwashed from the beginning, they wouldn't have turned out like that. So understanding leads to forgiveness. Let's just quickly add in something a bit simpler other than a dictator or an oil company or something. Let's say there's someone who you just don't get on with. If you have understanding for why they might behave as they do, which allows you to have forgiveness for them. They don't trigger you so much when you meet them. So if someone is rude to you or ignores you or turns their back on you or something like that in a group of people, let's say, you can have understanding why they are snoozy and rude. Perhaps they're brought up in a situation that caused them to be that way. Perhaps they've had things happen to them that caused them to be quite insecure. Perhaps they find you a threat. And then you can have forgiveness it doesn't bother you anymore. I understand they act that way. It's no reflection on me. It's not triggering me. I'm all good. It's nothing to do with me. I'm not going to take it personally. In fact, I can have love for this person because I feel a bit, feel a bit sad that they act that way because they must have had some sad things happen to them. So I'll continue to be nice and pleasant myself and I won't lower myself to it because it's all good. I'm not triggered. I'm fine. <laughs> Number three on how to have love for everyone and everything is a key realization, that of oneness. Now, we know we live in an energetic reality proven by science, proven by quantum physics. Now, this information-based reality we all interact with. Imagine a vast, infinite being. Not the type of being like a mammal or something that we can perceive, but the type of being that's difficult to perceive. God, if you will, an infinite being, an infinitely intelligent being that we're all part of, we're all one with, we all exist within. Imagine a big program, a big computer program, and we're all part, sub-programs running within that program. I'm not saying it's like a game or a program, but in an infinitely intelligent way that's beyond our comprehension. So, if each of us are sub programs within this overall running program that makes us all one 
if each of us are pinpoints of consciousness within this overriding, overarching consciousness that is creation, that makes us all one. Look at the atom. It's The atom is part of the unified field. It only manifests when someone's observing it. It's all energy. And it's all perceived in the mind. The same atoms that are within uh, a piece of iron, a piece of magnesium or whatever, they all exist within your body. We share elements with the earth. It's all the same atoms, it's all the same energy, it's all one. We use the same energy to exist. Our consciousnesses are focused into individuals. But those draw energy, those draw power, draw from the ultimate consciousness, which is creation. So through these thoughts we realise we're interconnected with everything, with the earth, with each other. Um, when we look upon another person or another being, we're looking upon ourselves. And if you love that other self, then you're loving yourself. And that love will be radiated back on you a hundredfold. And that's where the law of attraction comes in. If you're walking around feeling love for everyone and everything, that love will come back on you. And it surely does. And I experience it day in, day out. So how can you hate on another part of creation when it is you and you're intrinsically linked to it, you share its energy, you share the code, you share the programming, you share the information, we all interact with this one unified field, one creator, one infinitely intelligent being. And once you realise we really are all one, that hating on another part of creation is hating on the self, and that loving another part of creation is loving the self. It helps with understanding, it helps with forgiveness, and it helps with having love for everyone and everything. Number four, ways to have love for everyone and everything is to know that creation is impartial. I just explained about oneness. Know that creation, because it's existing to learn and experience itself, we are all part of it, everything is part of it. There must be the positive and there must be the negative and there must be everything in between. So by realising and accepting that the negative everything in creation is what it is because it must be, we can accept it better, therefore we can understand it better, therefore we can forgive it better. The negative will exist. We can resist it all we want and we're putting up negativities of our own. Instead, we can choose to love all of creation and its negativities. It doesn't make us negative. We're rising above it by experiencing the love and we're changing it for the positive by experiencing the love. Our love for everyone and everything will raise the vibration and eradicate the negative because in the higher stages of existence, the negativity goes away. It splits away. You get negative creations, positive creations. We're going towards a positive, but the negative will always exist. And in this stage of existence, in this density, there's both the positive and the negative. We are in a stage of existence where both coexist. And by accepting that that must be so, that there's two sides of a coin and we'll experience both in this reality, we can have love for everyone and everything because it's inevitable at this time. Number five on how to have love for everyone and everything is to do that inner work. As you know, I've got lots of videos on inner work, but Whatever is out there triggering us won't trigger us so much if we've done that inner work and we feel better and more balanced inside. So I won't go on about inner work in this video, but know that whatever happens out there, the emotions are created in here. They cannot make you feel a certain way. It's all happening out there and your response is an inner thing. And by doing that inner work, you can better let life wash over you. And you can choose when to feel positive emotions. Positive emotions move you. The negative ones, they don't so much because you've got a better handle on your traumas, healed them, problems, their challenges instead. And life becomes a wonderful journey of learning and experience. And then you can have more love for everyone and everything because you realize that it doesn't affect you, it doesn't trigger you, it's all in here. And number six, a way to love everyone and everything is by knowing that everyone is on their own path and that they're just another part of it, creation expressing itself. They're just another pinpoint of consciousness expressing itself. In order for creation to experience all that there is, 
if that's even possible. So every single consciousness that is alive, not just human, but animals or ETs or whatever you like, they're all just on their journey. They're part of creation experiencing itself, doing different things, looking at creation through different eyes, with different perceptions, having different experiences with different other selves, with different people. So you don't feel so triggered by anyone or anything because it's just another part of creation expressing itself in its own way. And again, you can have understanding, forgiveness, feel oneness, <laughs> and have love for everyone and everything. And you'll get there in the end. So these are the six ways that I find that I can experience love for everyone and everything. Now, I'll just add that there are times when I feel angry, cross, crazy, whatever, because I'll see something on the news, I'll see something horrible and disgusting that's happened, and I'll want to, you know. But by using these ways, we can start to rise above. We can start to feel that love. And by doing that, you're doing yourself a favor, you're doing creation a favor, you're doing the mass consciousness a favor, and you're helping others to raise their vibration. Nobody's perfect. You probably won't have love for everyone and everything. But if you do, in this human lifetime, you're doing an amazing job because we're not supposed to be this advanced yet. Next stage of existence, yes, but, or the one up, but if you can get this down now, you are so far along in your ascension. Okay, so leave me a comment to let me and others know what you feel about this. And if you can have love for everyone and everything, or not quite. And don't forget to click subscribe if you're not already a subscriber to receive regular spiritual inspiration on your journey through life. Like and share also because we're raising the mass vibration together. So go now in love and peace.